Hello, my darling from your nation. How are you? How are you doing, my darlings? How is life treating you? Today's episode is actually a kind of request from some of you who will say, how do you spot frenemies? How do you get rid of those bad eggs? How do you spot that girl that's trying to be a friend, but she don't love you at all? I am here to let you know I've had a couple of frenemies and I let them go. They had dealt with me. <laughs> So this is kind of a masterclass because I have been there. Now, I tell you this. Once you've been through one or two frenemies, you actually know what a true friend is. First up, a frenemy is somebody who really wants to take full advantage of whatever you got. That's just facts. Whether you got a fabulous job and they can take that opportunity for them, sales, whether they can say she's got this great job, I can see how I could get a job opportunity. Maybe I can get a job in her company through her. She's got a fabulous boyfriend. Maybe I can just shimmy shimmy up to her. Maybe I can get a man too. She's got this fabulous lifestyle. Maybe I can shimmy shimmy up to her and get something out of it too. They want something from you. They need something from you. So they're prepared to come with a mask and pretend to be a friend. They want to be in your clique. They want to travel like you do. They want to have some kind of benefit from you. That's a frenemy. A true friend doesn't care who you are. Doesn't care whether you're famous, not famous. They like you as you are. A frenemy will not go out of their way when you're in need. What's the point? It's a waste of time. If you are sick, sorry for you, mama. <laughs> She's not coming to your aid, but she will have an excuse. Um, I'm so sorry, you're not feeling well, but I can't come. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way here, there, and everything. I couldn't make it. They will not call and check on you. You will realize that when you really notice her or him for what they are, you will notice that the times when you were not well, when you needed somebody to come over and get you soup, when you needed somebody to come and pick you up, when you needed somebody to do an errand for you, they were not there. They are not thoughtful in the sense that if you have children, they're not coming to say, oh, I bought a little something for Adrian. They're not thoughtful like that. It will always be about themselves and always when you are having a good time, that's when they are there. Yes, my darlings. They will talk about you behind your back. Of course, you will not know that right away, but eventually you will find out. They will come to your parties, not to celebrate for you, but to see what they can get out of the parties and the people that are there for themselves. Frenemies are not honest. They tell lies about other people. They will tell lies about you. You see, if somebody comes to gossip to you about somebody else, they're going to go to somebody else and also gossip about you. Frenemies are dangerous because they're recording everything. They know when you buy something. When did you buy that? How were you able to afford this? When did you go here? They record everything. It's so bizarre because they are keeping tabs on your life and everything in your life. Frenemies are in competition with you. They are not there to root for you and say, go on girl, do your thing. <laughs> I'm supporting you. I'll be right here. They're in competition with you. If you buy a fabulous bag, Chanel, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga, rest assured, they're going to buy a bag like that too, or they're going to try to up you one on that. If you go on vacation to Saint-Tropez, trust and believe that they are in Spain, they're in Greece. They will always have an underlying current of shade where you will question it and you say, oh no, she didn't mean anything by it. She meant it. She meant everything by it. 
you have to know it from the get-go it might take some time you guys might be doing the same things you guys might go out have a good time kiki kiki at the party but she is not a friend she is a frenemy there are a lot of work it's a lot of headache unless you also say to yourself well you know she's okay I know that she's a little bit off here there no she's damaging she's very very damaging to you I went for lunch to a wonderful girlfriend's place she's a wonderful girl I distanced myself from her because I didn't care for the frenemy that she had and she did not know that this girl was a friend of me until very recently when she said for me you know when I tell you I'm so tired of her and I said that was why I wasn't coming around because I saw her from a mile away and I said this girl is not a friend and this particular friend of me was in constant competition like I said she was in constant oh let me do this i need to do that above her anytime when we would go out anytime and she was there she would always want to come to my friends friends us to say things behind her back it was so bizarre or to say she's the one that hosted this event she always wanted to be acknowledged and for us to know that it wasn't my friend that did this it was her she was the steam behind the, the whole event behind this very successful whatever it might be a frenemy is quite easy to spot because when you think of a friend you think of somebody that comes around without you asking without you needing without you pleading they're there for the good and the bad for the indifferent a frenemy is not there for any of that a frenemy is only there for the good times you will realize when you are doing something fabulous when you are going somewhere wonderful when you've been invited to a party or event oh ooh, ooh, i can come i can come 20 miles away she's sick she's this one oh i can come i can come a frenemy is somebody that truly and absolutely is envious of you and has you stored in her brain living there rent free you have something that she wants and she cannot understand why you're so easily loved, acceptable by so many, because that is what she craves. There's a lot of insecurity with this frenemy. Of all frenemies, insecurity towards you. They really do look at you as better. And they cannot find their own space, their own stage, their own place in the world. They love you for what you have but they hate you that is you that has it and not them <laughs> and so what my darlings let us have a little bit of what old-fashioned story time listen to the story I met this girl a long time ago I was in my 20s and I'm a very friendly person you know you say hi I say hi back and so we hung out a lot but you know when you are busy with your own life and things are you know really crazy and the schedules are all over the place you don't pay attention to little things that you should have been paid attention to and so that was our relationship I moved to California from New York because we were friends in New York and do you know that it never occurred to me in any way shape or form why she never ever came to visit I came to visit her I would come to New York because my sister still lived in New York so I would come and see her I would come to New York for jobs and stuff like that and I would always make a point to come and see her I made the excuse that she never came to California to see me when I relocated from New York because she really just didn't have any money so she couldn't come out there solely to come and see me I always came to New York to do stuff, to be very honest, but I made it a point to always visit her when I was there. I made it an absolute, she was the only one that I made it a point 
to go out and see her. So I felt that, you know what, she doesn't know anybody in California. She doesn't have any business or anything in California. So I can't expect her just to come out on a regular, if at all, to come and see me. And I was fine with it. Up until she did come to California to come and see a potential boyfriend of sorts. It was quite shocking because she said, oh, for me, come and meet me, A, B, and C. And I did. And I was kind of surprised because she never once said, oh, let me come and see where you're staying. How's the acting going? I watch all of your shows. I watch Ugly Betty, because I was an Ugly Betty, hoping that maybe I will see you in a scene and everything. I'm so proud of you, Fumi. None of that. I found it to be quite odd, but I thought, you know what? She's so desperate to get married. Let her be, this is her focus, not a problem. I saw her of all 15, 10 minutes, and that was it. I said, okay, don't worry about it, fools. You do you. And that was that. Needless to say, I was in Los Angeles for nine years. I was in New York for 10 and I was in California for 9 and this friend of me never ever came to visit me one time. Anyway, I met Ula and I was engaged. It was a fantastic time. As a matter of fact, we just celebrated our 13 year wedding anniversary and it's amazing how time flies. And this friend of mine turned <laughs> That was how I feel. It was unbelievable how this person turned so black. And I think and I know because I got married and she didn't. She just could not understand why. <laughs> She couldn't get married, and I just did. On top of which, with I got proposed to within a week. <laughs> I have an episode of that, and I'll link it below for you guys. I, you know, with frenemies, what they don't understand is that the ugly side of them is evident to everybody. But I guess we, as their friends, we forgive them. We overlook their certain traits. We're patient with them. But everybody else can really see them for the miserable people that they are. And that is why they cling to us because we're the only ones that will tolerate their nonsense. A lot of frenemies have got that negative energy. They are in the way of their own destiny, but they can't see it. This frenemy of mine was a beautiful girl but she had a horrible personality. I forgave her, I overlooked her, I even made excuses for her, but she just was a very unpleasant person a lot of the time. And so when I look back and think, she couldn't have been a wonderful wife because she had to get out of her own way and be pleasant. This person, frenemy, was so bitter that at my wedding, <coughs> She totally was absent. She wasn't in any of the wedding pictures because she was busy smoking cigarettes downstairs. She had a very rubbishy uh, speech. And honestly, a rubbishy speech. It was a rubbishy speech. It was quite offensive. It wasn't anything pleasing or pleasant at all. And I still overlooked all of that. Yes, I overlooked it. Because she went to my husband's speech. Oh, you know what? You're, 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 you know what, Fumi? She, she exaggerates. She's not the best. <laughs> she exaggerates. Now, you know, watch out for her kind of thing. Family and all. And my new family. This was the frenemy. I lived in Norway for five years. Maybe a little bit more. And this was funny. She came to Norway <laughs> about five, six times looking for a husband, looking for a prospect. 
that was when it was really evident to me because she never came to me in California to visit. But Norway was a different territory. If you got a husband, you, <laughs> I should have all kinds of men falling at my feet. It was not the case. I sat back in amusement. A frenemy will always go for all kinds of opportunities that they can grasp from you. So I had made friends with yet another girl. And this girl was where my frenemy stayed as opposed to stay with me. Because this other person lived in a prosperous neighborhood where there were potential singletons. And I didn't mind it because I wanted her to go out. I wanted her to come. Maybe you meet somebody, maybe you get married. I even said, wouldn't that be a trip for her to come and then we could be, you know, sister wives, sister friends, wife friends, friends wives here, if you are willing. But a friend of me and for us, we need to pick the mirror and let them look at themselves. You are your worst problem. But what you should not do, my darlings, is make that problem yours. And so as time went by and it was very evident that she was an opportunist and she really was getting madder at me because I was happy and I was evolving. And at that time, I really got lucky. I started working, acting, modeling very, very quickly in Norway. I got a model agency. I was so, so happy. And then I was on, uh, I was in the feature film Vagvim. I also did Hotel Cesar. And that was a daytime uh, soap opera. Fantastic. It was all over the nation of Norway. And I think it showed in different parts of Scandinavia. And so I was really, really able to work right away and learn the language. And of course, Ula, such an amazing husband. I was making friends. I was enjoying my life. And she said, absolutely not. And she was getting more and more angry, more and more madder. Did I mention that she came to my wedding and she refused to wear a dress? She wore something else so that she could stand out. I didn't notice that until she did it again when she was invited to yet another wedding in Norway that we were all invited to. And herself and her friend wore another standout peace dress so that they could be able to be noticed. They were noticed. But the funny thing was that when you are nasty to somebody, when you give that undercurrent comments, when you are not pleasant, people notice. And the thing is that you bring the attention to yourself. I don't have to do anything. I just have to sit and admire and watch and be like, thank you, God. Thank you for all of my angels to really show out my enemies and my frenemies. And so every time she came to Norway, it was a dud. It was a fail. She finally relocated to Germany where she got into a physical combat fight. She didn't get any relationships and she had to leave. Yeah. And uh, I began to distance myself away from her because I realized that I was going in a wonderful, beautiful direction and I did not need this energy. I never quarreled with her. I never ever had a one-on-one -on -one with her. I just <laughs> moved out of the way <laughs> and let her fly past and crash. That is what you do with frenemies. Let them go. Ultimately, before they drag you into their mess, negativity, energy, and they distract you from being friends, other friends with boss babes that love you, you love them, you love each other's families, you evolve, you grow together. She's the wind in your back. She's the sun ahead of you. And she really means the best for you. And that I found in Christina. So you have to get rid of a lot of people in your life. They are distractions. And these distractions will distract you from your ultimate goal. Get them out of the way. Push them. <laughs> Shove them out of the way. Them, 
the other new friends around them, their friends, the not so goodies, shove them out, throw them out. There were about six or seven of them, I can't remember. Throw them out. Don't respond to anything that they say or accusations. They're not worthy of your golden time. You come, you build your brands, be a boss babe, your careers, your husband, your children, be happy. Really evolve to be this positive, wonderful person. Don't let negativity in your life. It doesn't work and I have seen it a couple of times. And of course, like I said, it happened to me. And so I, there are no regrets, only experiences. So when somebody comes with a snack comment, or they say one or two things or do one or two things that is uncalled for know that that's a frenemy and frenemies are more dangerous than enemies because enemies you can see them straight on frenemies they will come they will sit beside you watch you drink arsenic cyanide watch you die and still be smiling with you they will serve you the arsenic and the cyanide and they'll be smiling with you they want your life they want you dead and they will take your life Trust and believe me, you do not want frenemies in your life. I'll take the enemy before the frenemy. All right, my darlings, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Do not forget <laughs> to love, to share, to like, to subscribe. Okay, my darling Fumi Nation friends, sisters. <laughs> frenemies, you can make a comment or two there too. Not a problem. I still get the views. <laughs> All of my love. Bye. <laughs>